thing that's interesting, I'm going to add a little bit here at the end of this video, that um, a lot of people test homoscedasticity, and uh, and if they fail to test it, uh, if they if it fails, or if they uh, if if they reject the null hypothesis, uh, they go on to trying to get robust estimates of their beta weights, and that's what this is about. I mean, I've got the I've got heteroscedasticity in my data, and so now the standard errors associated with my beta weights are not accurate. And so I'm going to have to re-estimate those uh, standard errors using another technique, a correction factor, which I'm going to do in another video. So when you've got heteroscedasticity, you're not stuck. You do have options. And I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. Uh, but what I'm also going to show you something interesting is that um, uh, I'm going to actually do the regression again. And I'm going to save the residuals based on, on the um, variables that were included in the model. Just bear with me here, because I want to AMHDJWARG. So those five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and I'm going to use method enter just to force those in. Uh, and I'm going to save the unstandardized residuals. Because I actually think there's something interesting about the heteroscedasticity in these data. And I think that's uh, something that people unfortunately don't do, uh, is examine the nature of the heteroscedasticity in their data. AFI resid. And what what I want to know is, does this hetero, is there something interesting about the heteroscedasticity that might be interesting? And I'm actually going to have to create something else here. Uh, if you're not interested in learning this, you can just turn the video off. Uh, uh, so I'm going to have to create another variable, uh, which is the um, ID variable. Because I just want to look at, um, this is how you create an ID variable in SPSS. So I'm going to actually correlate. These, is the, these are the residuals associated with my dependent variable. And this is an ID variable going from 1 all the way down to 89. These, the, because these variables, these data are associated with time, so it goes back from uh, December th uh, 31st um, going through the years of 2004 all the way to 2010, 11 rather. Uh, it makes sense to create a time variable that's really just a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because it's each month. And what I want to do is correlate my residual with my ID variable. Uh, unfortunately, uh, i got to get rid of this terrible label. OK, analyze, correlate, bivariate, ID variable, AFI. All right. And what we got is a correlation of 0.34 between uh, time and residuals. So the residuals are getting bigger across time. And that's what, um, I mean, that's a, a, a way of looking at heteroscedasticity, that the variance is increasing across time. And that suggests that the predictive capacity, it suggests that the predictive capacity of my regression model is weaker across time. Uh, but the the I mean this is really just a very quick way of trying to look at that. I mean, it might be nonlinear in nature. It might be going up and down over time with a with with yes a linear trend. Anyway, I just want to end this with yeah. You, well, this video is about testing heteroscedasticity from a statistical significant way. And if you reject your null hypothesis of homoscedasticity, yes, you have to reestimate the standard errors, which I'm going to do in another uh, video. The standard errors is associated with the beta weight. But then there's the extra bit of well, what's the nature of this heteroscedasticity? Is it interesting? Might there be some patterns that uh, can uncover some interesting hypotheses or uh, suggest some interesting hypotheses? Anyway, thanks for watching.